welcome back with another video today we have why itachi uchiha and mara uchiha are not as different as you think it's on both screens without further ado let's get straight into the video when it comes to naruto characters in particular the uchiha clan some of the first names that you'll ever hear they'll be Madara uchiha sasuke uchiha and itachi uchiha those are nine times out of ten they're going to be the first three names that you hear naruto fans mention in that order or some variation of it and while it's easy to say that they are all drastically different from each other which granted to be fair there are key distinct differences between these three there are some areas where their characters overlap that are pretty subtle and overlooked like for example with the characters of itachi uchiha and madaru uchiha which is why in today's newest naruto explain video we're going to be taking a look at some of the information that will make you see the overlap to parts of madara and itachi's character that has been overlooked by some fans and isn't known information to many others since this material was never animated in naruto or naruto shifuden so the information is going to be coming to us via the naruto prologue story title itachi shinden the story of daylight which covers the early years of the life of itachi uchiha from from the last moments of the third ninja war where itachi was traumatized by his father when fugaku took him onto the battlefield and it goes all the way up to the moment where itachi is about to undertake his mission to enter into the anbu black ops in the scene that we're going to be looking at a five-year-old itachi after the birth of his brother sasuke is driven deeply into his training he's been training extremely hard with his father fugaku and training on his own like a madman because the trauma is still lingering from having been taken onto the battlefield a year prior and itachi took his mother's words to heart that he needed to protect sasuke this led to itachi yeah that's key right there why itachi is one of my favorite characters is because well, I'm going to just start however my mind work, but it's like this animation, this creativity is derivative from real life. I mean, of course, you can't think of nothing that doesn't already exist in the infinite domain, the Akashic Records. So it's like we pull things from real life and implement it into our arts. But yeah, what, I, what I like about Itachi, he seen this friend die early on. He seen how cruel the world was, especially if you... If you didn't have the power, you didn't have the strength to defend you and yours. So it's like he worked endlessly and tirelessly on his craft because he knew it was vital to protect the ones he loved as well as himself. Like, again, he seen this friend die early on. He felt hopeless. He didn't feel strong enough to even test the trajectory. So, um, yeah, that's why Itachi, one of my favorite characters. Like, I titled one of my videos earlier on, um, what was it? Um, I wish I was in the anime and opposed, as opposed to being in this world where people can impose their will on you. I don't like that. Like, you hear the Junko Furuto stories and a female naturally born with this weaker vessel of a body in comparison to a male. So a male can impose his will on her, put her in a trunk or whatever. She's not physically strong enough to defend herself and that's the generalized statement in fact i'm not talking about exceptions to the rule or whatever and yeah so i i know i'm, I'm kind of everywhere here already i feel like but and um yeah if i'm fortunate enough to have kids in the future i'm gonna name my first son itachi some people look at things differently some people look at anime like oh it's a nerdy thing or it's well i'm different and I see the infinite in the smallest things. It can be one word that's one syllable. And I can make a whole picture around that one thing. And I have done it before as well. But, um, yeah, we feel and know it's important. Earlier on, you go through trauma, you see what happened. And then you have regret that linger on you that you ain't do what you know you should have did when you was younger. But then you look back at it like you were scared and you weren't strong enough. At least you so felt. And from the moment forward, you make a vow to yourself to get stronger so you can protect your loved ones, so you can protect you and yours. So, and I felt like Itachi wholeheartedly embodied that as well. So, yeah, I titled it. 
I wish I was in the anime as opposed to being in this world to where people can impose their will on you. I don't like that. Again, the Junko Furuto story, even what the indigenous and aboriginal people went through. And it's still relevant because they have the same hate and disdain and they blood through epigenetic trauma due to what some forefathers did to your ancestors and send you through epigenetic trauma. And all the things we subjected to and how we being held back to how they perceptionalize our people in a light that isn't in favor of us to what people have their preconceived notions of us due to how they depicted us and how they advertise us. And people perceive it to be the way they intended them to see it. So it's so it's ongoing battles in every avenue. Go from net to you simply putting on deodorant on the metals that's in it and everything the residual effects is having on your body it's all negative they find in multiple ways and to implement to attack us and keep us bombarded with distractions and kill us slowly and going to their pharmaceuticals and, and even if a country wants something they want the gold and mother earth's blood being oil they don't vote of hands and they just decide and go over there take right r word pillage and whatever they do to obtain things like um that's why i feel like it's not only important i feel like it's it's you don't have a choice that's why i get the money and the means to do so i want to undergo my kiana reeves john wick cha training um special ops training i want to do all that i just want to be completely well-rounded competent capable and sharp to why i know i could defend me and mine physically intellectually in every way it counts having your life skills from knowing how to fish how to swim how to cortisize a wound how to sew how to read a map coordinates at least the words you use on a daily basis in every other language i know psychology i know how humans operate I, I, but Yeah, it's just so much I'm working towards. And it's like when you learn that, you think, oh, that's going to consume all my time. And yeah, you're right. It is going to consume a lot of time. But it's deeper than that. You're strengthening your bloodline. you making new neural pathway connections through neuroplasticity. you rewriting your DNA with the lifestyle and action with the corresponding feeling, a lifestyle. And then when you do have kids, if you're fortunate enough to have them in the near future, your kids may inherit the gifts and talents and traits, things you worked hard to acquire. They may inherit it, or if not, they'll be more susceptible to picking it up faster than their peers. So it's deep. It's about just being better and stronger in every way, shape, and form because we all fucked up through epigenetic trauma. I all have been. I would like to think, I believe so for sure, that I've corrected most of what was wrong with me. But it's little things I... I hear somebody say something, it could be good or negative, I just pay attention to how my internal feel about that, how my vibe change, and why is that my trigger, and where it stems from, and I know I'm everywhere here, but my brain works like this, so, yeah, Itachi is definitely one of my favorite characters, because he knew earlier on the harsh real reality of life, if you're not strong enough and brave enough to do whatever, you will be exploited for what you don't know, he didn't feel strong or brave enough to protect his friend earlier on so from that moment forward he made a vow to get stronger to protect him and his little brother he took heed to what his mother said and then to become the hukage as well to protect just to protect he is and do his right so in order for you to for you to truly be a good person for you to truly be a good person you can't be a good person and be a coward it's not possible because if you a coward and you got a brotherhood or a sisterhood, they can weak you out because they know you're the weakest link. Chain is the strongest, the weakest link. You can be bribed, threatened, envious, or jealous. And the whole ship can sink all because of you ain't had no balls. So, I don't know. I feel like some people tend to put, um, they tend to put, like you know how some people get bullied? They tend to put someone being soft or scared of confrontation in the category of being good. Nah, that isn't true. If you're not strong, you can't really be good. Because you will let your loved ones, things that happen to them, just because you're scared and you're not. So I, it's, yeah. And here, here's my, my own. This me, this, this my own character. You see, I'm, I'm Senju and Uzumaki. 
and I'm Uchiha, and yeah, that's my own character. It look like me, don't it? Yeah, that's my own character. I need to get in contact with Kishimoto. They need to put me in an anime. I, I need my own character. But now, nah, let's continue with the video. That should be making me mad sometimes because it's like some days I'm way sharper and better than others. Like, my synapses ain't sparking how it usually is by default. So I'm, I feel like I'm just scatterbrained and disorganized. I'm usually like, or well, Lisa. Well, let's continue. He realizing that like him his younger brother Sasuke would be expected to become a shinobi and the idea of his younger brother being one of the shinobi in the future who gets killed while protecting the village it pushed Itachi to train even harder it's yeah. during this time that his Itachi continues to push himself that unbeknownst to him Shisui is already watching him from the shadows as he's training taking note of how Itachi's skill level at only at the age of five was already better than most of the adult shinobi and multiple jonin that we get a good chunk of information that makes you realize how similar Mata and Itachi were and how it runs deeper than just their love for the brothers though that is a part of it who they were both made to promise to protect and they each took that promise very seriously but both of them went about it in different ways so with the scene and the context finally being set is here i'm going to begin reading the selected scenes from the story and then we're going to come back to you guys my thoughts and we're going to unpack everything that we just went over and tie it all together briefly and as here i'm going to begin quoting those selected scenes itachi trained non-stop since the day his father had taken him to the battlefield just one more year until his long-awaited start at the academy his sole objective was to hone his skills so that he could become a ninja among ninja. Why a ninja among ninja? To rid the world of fighting, of course. Itachi refused to accept his father's conception that a ninja- oh, Yeah, that's the point I, I think I lost earlier. Like him working tirelessly and endlessly to becoming stronger. And when you get to that point, he knew he would have to do things he don't want to do and have to bear the pain of taking someone else's lives, whether they deserved it or not, to protect his village simply. And it's gonna take a strong person for your people as a collective to have a good life. And that strong person is gonna to have to do things that they truly didn't wanna do. Like kill. Sometimes you ain't got the, you can see this person and you know you can convert them to positive to direct them to their own individual life. But it only take less than a half a second for your life to end up for you to be paralyzed or seriously damaged. So you got to make that split choice to end this person's life right here. Or risk it by trying to penetrate this person's heart. And this person still can possibly get rid of you. And now everything collapsed because your village or whatever depended on you. Or get rid of you and then go and do what they were going to do to your, your people that you're trying to protect. So it's like... He became strong to protect his and the one that becomes strong to protect his is going to have to endure a lot of pain and suffering and be stoic. Like it's going to take you to be the walking embodiment of, I don't know, it's like not feeling anything just so your people can feel. It's like you kill your own heart so other people's can glow. And I guess that'll make yours glow you seeing that they get to live out their lives and it's it's good for the most part so yeah i relate with this character a lot and all of it is stemmed from real life and real situations and what you really see and what goes on so yeah, that's the point i was missing earlier it's like i was everywhere i'm trying to get to and it just slipped like well let's continue is someone who lived amongst the killing where the ninja arts and chakra are really only for fighting itachi he didn't believe that to be the case if you had the greatest strength you could step in between people who are fighting and stop them if you were a ninja exactly. more powerful than the other ninja villages at war no ninja however skilled they were could ever stand against you itachi exactly. if he were strong enough he could prevent enormous fights like the last great ninja war nobody else would need to die he had a goal so his devotions they were not That's difficult real. itachi looked up at the moon just me and sasuke itachi thought 
he left the sliding doors open. After stepping out with Sasuke in his arms, Sasuke began to cry. The moment he gave voice to his brother's name, something warm exploded in his heart, different from the love he felt for his mother and his father. A special, indescribable emotion. Itachi couldn't really put it into words. Faced with this creature, who seemed like he could shatter if Itachi wasn't careful, something like a masculine sense of responsibility did indeed come to life inside of him. The feeling that he had to protect this tiny life at all costs, end quote. So that right there, we mixed in a couple of passages from around this scene since they flow together in the story within the two to three pages of each, depending on where you start, but they were needed to paint a picture that was needed for this discussion. What we're seeing here is that at a young age, Itachi had already come to the conclusion of something that not even Madara Uchiha, for as wise and as cunning as he was, Madara was still unable to reach the same conclusion that Itachi did. Itachi at the age of five, just as Hiros and Sarutobi told us later on in Naruto volume 65 of the manga, he was already thinking like a Kage, and because he had the wisdom of a Kage, but most importantly, the innocence of a child who had not yet been fully corrupted by the ninja world, traumatized due to being on the battlefield but not yet corrupted. Itachi saw past the usage of the chakra that the descendants that Indra had left behind had started to come to view chakra as, whereas they viewed chakra as being a means of warfare. Itachi at this age was already pondering if there wasn't some other method of use for chakra that was meant to bring people closer together and starting to believe using chakra for battle purpose was wrong in terms of the intended use of chakra which we as the audience we all know he is definitely correct in his thinking and he's thinking along the lines of how the sage of six paths intended for chakra to be used makes you wonder what happens if itachi and hagaroma and that's rare being young and a prodigy and you having the wisdom through simply observation, mentors, and even experience on the field. And to still, on the receiving end, still have your child like innocent, so it will make you vibrant and alive. Because a lot of people, you think they're alive, but it's really that all my life exists and I live in, everybody been getting it, guess I'm just not as driven. It's pretty much that. It's like people just walking and dead, really. They don't know what it's like to really live on, like, what you want to do and why do you want to do it and, and just doing it, like. But that's rare for you to have the wisdom of, of an elder or maybe even surpass an elder and still have your... <laughs> I relate with that would have met however this is where there are some interesting intersecting lines with itachi and madara but also why i firmly believe that itachi is greater than madara both of them saw the issue of the shinobi world yeah, a world where children they could just be sent out to die especially here is in here is in sent kids out to die fathers they wouldn't return home to their wives and mothers wouldn't return home to their children children might get blown up madara and hashirama thought that by making the leaf village they could protect those young lives yet the funding of a village it requires and yeah, every villain feel they're the hero to their own story. When people go rogue or bad, it's still, nine times out of ten, it's conditioning. It can be epigenetic memory. It can be a multitude of things. It can be they simply a mirror of what they grew up in, what they had or what they didn't have. Just simply being a mirror of this construct. And they just embody resistance at that point. Like Madara wasn't so bad, really. He knew it was inevitable it would be conflict no matter the era. That was just these humans' nature. And for him to obtain this heaven-like utopia on Earth, he felt he would have to revert to this... What was that? I don't think it was called the Infinite Sukiyama. But the thing he reflect on the moon. And then... It would be like having no pain, no tears, no, but with no pain and no tears and no adversity comes no growth. And possibly complacency see, and t taking things for granted and 
But that's like, but that still pertains to it as well. What's how I go to um the path to hell is paved for good intentions, or um, is that backwards? It's like I know what he was trying to get at. He had good reason behind it, for it, but that's not for you to say. If you're imposing your will on everyone else, the populace, the mass majority. So it's like it was, he had good intent, but it's not for him to say if it's going against other people's own individual will and what they want. And it's fake, it wouldn't be real. But he knew it was inevitable. It would be conflict no matter the era. It'll never be a human, I mean, a heaven like utopia due to... I guess just humans nature and what's in a blood and how were they, how they were designed and greed and all these human emotions and things yeah so yeah I rock with Madara too I ain't agree with his methodology though but I get it cause real life I know you got countries against other countries or at least they masquerade and parade and make it seem like that and acting out a role and they all have a elite deep state that's a brotherhood that's on the same accord to obtain an end goal and fucking over the populace and deducting the numbers the population what they had on the georgia guidestones stones and um so even in some of them holy texts they even talk about wars being in the heavens. So whether you believe in the flat earth, a firmament or not, or the 33 Mason, you got to go 33 times the speed of sound to leave earth's gravitational pull, whatever you believe, just outside of this planet. They say it was wars in the heavens. So it's conflict no matter the era. You even have extraterrestrials or reptilian shapeshifters that's here on earth that walk around and assume human form and they smarter than you not to say your potential isn't there or can exceed that but currently they're smarter than you and they have neural pathways unlocked the higher brain capacity and they know things esoteric knowledge spiritual technology or whatever and they decide consciously to to use their knowledge for evil self in, interest or indifferent and i literally see that i literally see it's something more to what's going on and you would think when well, in, intelligence comes peace and you know but it's it's a lot of intelligent beings out here that just consciously choose to to do bad or just self interest or indifferent some people say it ain't no such thing as bad but the, the duality of things they say it ain't no such thing as bad or good it's subjective I get what they mean with that but I feel like it's a paradox or something in there because it is bad if you got someone tied up and you imposing your will on them and that person that you are victimized and have his own dreams and aspirations and you cutting it short simply because you want to do the following and you doing something that you can't take yourself or you wouldn't want to be done to you or yours and, and. Yeah, let's continue let's wrap it up it's the feudal lord to bankroll the hidden leaf village and the feudal lord has power over the hokage which is why wars eventually get fought due to the feudal lord being the one that pulls the strings decades later itachi found himself thinking that his father was wrong that a ninja was only truly ever alive on the battlefield and was meant to die on the battlefield itachi saw the root of this issue the feudal lords and the wars that they're pushing the countries into and like madara despite not wanting to get more violent he understood that the only way to feasibly stop violence during this time period was to respond to violence with immeasurable and overwhelming power that forces those in power to listen to you and bend to your will and your desire for peace both men were driven largely by their desires to protect their young brothers 
Madara lost several during the Warring States era and finally lost his only surviving brother before he agreed to join this in the treaty to form Konoha. Itachi, from the moment he saw his brother in the hospital, the first time he held him and he spoke his name, he became concerned with a young life that he viewed as being so fragile it could shatter, eventually dying on the battlefield due to ninja conflict and Itachi wanted to put an end to the fighting and he was obsessed with getting strong enough that he wouldn't just be the strongest ninja in the village but he'd be the strongest ninja in the five nation. The only choice to be Hokage one day no other options and he could begin using his position of power to force the ninja villages to rethink what they thought chakra is best suited for the common line with he and madara as you see is the perception of force as a tool the life that we see in board to naruto next generations itachi he was already visualizing a life like that minus the technology just as madara envisioned this utopia where there'll be no winners there'll be no losers everything would be at peace Yet both men wanted to go about getting those results in similar but different ways. Both we made USAA for homeowners who like being ready. That's why we have safety tips for things like fires. Both paths they require. Let's see, here one more time. Wanted to go about getting those results in similar but technology. Just as Madara envisioned this utopia where there will be no winners, there will be no losers, everything will be at peace. Yet both men. See. It was for good intentions, but them good intentions is paved to the road of hell, man. That's where you draw the line at. Your intentions can be good, can be pure. You just got to do, you got to look in the mirror and start with self and do what you can do for self. And then your immediate home, and you do that. And directly you will be contributing to society and helping everyone else out. And... It draws the line when you, all y'all should do this. Uh, like, no, let people have their own free will. But with that, and realistically, it'll never be a heaven like Utopia. Nowhere. It was war above the heavens. Conflict no matter the era. It's people here that manipulated and infiltrated the governments. Any government you know of. And they used the intelligence for evil. To feed off of other life forms to sustain life. And people are merely cattle or batteries to, yeah. So I'm like, what, was he really wrong? I mean, yeah, because, like, I want for people, or I want it for people what I want for myself. So he, he, he wanted something without their consent and to bring about and actualize, manifest, and materialize. But it started off like that. Like, I want for people what I want for myself. But you got to change that. Otherwise, I'm moderate at that point. Now, I want for people what they want for themselves. Like the universe. Question is, do you know what you want? And the universe operate like this. If you believe I'm the best and you truly believe it with every fiber of your being, the universe agrees with you. If you anxious and nervous and you doubtful of yourself and self-sabotaging and you feel like you're not good, the universe also agree. So I feel like that's that's the best way. That's the best way you can put your support behind things without uh, influence or anything or force. So yeah, I want for people what they want for themselves. That's how the universe operates as well. And he figured, this is what I want. And I, this was what I know you guys want as well. And he forced this on everyone. And everyone would not be on the same accord. No matter how beautiful the vision or dream is, or even if it's possible, everyone will never be on the same accord. No matter the day, age, era. Let's continue. And wanted to go about getting those results in similar but different ways. Both paths, they required force. And honestly, both were unreasonable. However, one less so than the other. Madara's plan, it took away free will itself. It was completely authoritarian in how yeah. it was being executed. Itachi's plan, on the other hand, was to become so strong that his power alone 
could force the other villages to come together to form a treaty because no one would dare stand against them. And when you think about it, that's kind of what we got now. Do you think the other four Kage are going to stand up against the Hidden Leaf Village when you got people like Naruto and Sasuke there? Two people who could just blow up the continent if they wanted to? No, you're gonna listen to them and you're gonna go along with peace. In return, Itachi thought of a world where the ninja village- See how you gotta obtain that peace though? They gotta be cause they in fear of you. They, they un understand the consequences of their actions and so you have to become super powerful so they think twice even then so it will be some apples out of the bunch that still do it whether they stupid or not i would say it's stupid but at the end when they die off i guess they need to coerce the next generation into being just as powerful if not more powerful so they can still have this underlying thing enforced of don't mess with whatever because you know how strong he is and you know the consequences of you see what I'm saying here like that's crap you gotta be very powerful and you gotta people gotta think twice about it you gotta be so powerful that people think and they stay at bay for you to have temporary peace for how long Maybe the better way was modern way. Hell. They would work together instead of where they were at war with one another. He thought of a world where chakra was being used. Instead of to make new jutsu, they would find ways to make chakra to better the lives of people. He thought the villages working together would eliminate the need of a feudal lord altogether which in turn would stop the wars between the nations, which would keep people like his younger brother Sasuke from dying. Yet the sad thing is that his ideal for the future, while some of it's come true, a lot, a lot of it's come true, at the time it required Itachi if he wanted to make it an achievable thing, he needed to do so through force the same way that Madara did albeit on a different path, which is so heartbreaking because it is a reflection of the sign of the times that we're in at that point in the timeline. By this point in the timeline, it is very important to remember that you still have relics who they were either fighting in the feudal era or their disciples and their children, they're in prominent positions of power. You had people like the legendary Sanin who were born four years before the first ninja war ever took place. And you have people like Fugaku who were born just a year after the first ninja war ended and a year before the legendary Sonny would become Ganon at the age of six which is crazy both men they had visions of peace but the era that they were in was still too steep in the most primal of urges of human nature which is ultimately violence no matter how nice the person is there's still a violent switch there both men they were traumatized by war but one acted in a more aggressive manner in Madara and somewhere along the way he began to get swallowed up by the thrill that came from battle, seeking it out. Whereas the other one, Itachi, even at a young age, he began looking for ways to avoid fighting by seeking the quickest path possible to end the fights and having a preference to use genjutsu to end fights so as to avoid confrontation physically. With there only being a few exceptions in the life of a young Itachi that you can count on both hands where genjutsu was not a viable option. Stuff like this is why I find Itachi's character so fascinating. Because while he's not the strongest Uchiha, he's not even the third strongest Uchiha in the history of the clan. Sorry to break it to Itachi fans, those are facts. He is the one I believe that has the most complexity to his character, which this video essay on the right breaks down the complexity of Itachi's character in depth. And this video on the left very extensively breaks down every number one. Well. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X. Formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Yeah, us versus them, man. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out.